Okay, check. One, two, three. One, two, three. It's just going to be a informal, quick or well, not, as you like, guys like prefer. Us sitting, sitting around, guys. So, Martin. Yes, <laughs> so okay. it was just the, the idea was for you guys if you have any questions about each other's presentation or any questions like in general. Martin, that was a really great presentation. Um, and I don't think people spend enough time focused on oxygen. I was just in cave country in, in Florida yeah. Yeah, yeah. and people were filling c cylinders with oxygen that weren't, you know, they had been nitrox and they really? were topping oh them off with God. nitrox. Oh my God. <laughs> which is dangerous, yeah. Oh, it's super dangerous, super dangerous. and. Uh, yeah, no, no, you've got to treat oxygen with the utmost respect. And I say when the equipment is brand new and it's oxygen clean and oxygen prepared and oxygen ready, you can take liberties. But if it hasn't been oxygen cleaned at all, then, you know, you've got the, the wrong grease and all the rest of it involved. Oh, dirt. So, yeah, yeah. well, and the, that, you know, as the equipment gets older, then um, the chance of getting more dirt in is, 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 is there. You know, so if you borrow, um, you know, if you, you buy a second hand unit, third hand, we've got units that have had six owners. Um, and you've got no, unless you've had this, the regulator's service and the, on the, all the auction side. I mean, we, we recommend auction hoses be replaced about every five or six years. Oh, wow. Um, mm -hmm. Just take the hoses off and put new ones on. And, um, and how about grease? Is there a, a frequency with well, just annual service of your yeah, regulators? No, annuals should be fine. I mean, if you actually get any water inside the regulator, then uh, you've got to service it huh. straight, straight away. You can't leave it in, but... Um, yeah, you know, it's it generally, generally normally regular annual annual servicing is fine. Gotcha. I I have um, been. I remember from way back from my class, slowly opening the valve, but it doesn't. You know, it's yeah, you probably can, within yeah. thirty seconds or a minute. If, it's certainly yeah, open. If you can hear the gas going in, it's too fast. Oh. Yeah. So oh. so yeah, you want to just be um, very very just open it a little, and then wait. And just be patient and watch the needle so rise. So a little gas will go in and kind of stabilize, and then you. No, you just, but basically once you open it a little bit more than that, the, the, you'll see the needle go up very, very slowly, and let it allow it to take a minute uh, to get up there. If you allow 45 seconds to a minute, you'll increase the safety enormously. Uh, and once it's fully up to pressure, you can open the valve as much as you like, right? Uh, as fast as you like, because there's no. It's the pressurization rate we should be teaching, not open the valve ah, slowly. Ah. And for 50 Which isn't taught no, that way. It's no, no, no. And for 50 years, we've been all taught to open the valve slowly, but it's not the right advice. Ah. So pressurize it slowly. I'll yeah. start telling people that when I see them <laughs> yeah. at Cave Country. It's like, yeah. oh, don't do that. I mean, you're on a big boat with you know lots of people, lots of expensive gear lying around. You, nobody wants a fire. Right. Uh, and, yeah. I, and personally, I've never known one. Yeah. But I've, I've, you know, I've, I've had fires reported to me, and uh, I've, I've had some very, you know, some, some, some customers that have been injured and they've they've very kindly agreed to let me use their photographs and they're horrific photographs massive burns and they're talking 12 months to, to recover wow. you know they have to wear gauzes throughout the heat of the summer to, to keep the skin covered and it's, it's really a it's, it's a serious game and of course then you get the the, the damage to property buildings to uh, boats to cars and all the rest of it and I showed some of those photographs in my presentation because so, um, with oxygen it's more than just a lighter flame. I mean, it's it's a in super intense flame, right? Just by the nature. Well, of the oxygen itself doesn't burn. It's everything else that's With there which burns fiercely <coughs> in in oxygen. And if you've got a lot of high pressure oxygen flowing, um, you know the, the first stage will just melt. It just just turns into a molten fireball. Uh, you know, you've got brass burning. You've got, and the most of the fires are occurring these days uh, uh, in in the filling stations, oh. um, and. Uh, you know, they're, 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 the initial people that do the training course are probably okay, but they pass it on to somebody else who doesn't quite really understand Filling what's going on. And, and, they're in a uh, hurry. And yeah, yeah. So, that, um, so you see them you know, operate these pumps way, way too quickly. They should be mm. pumping one pump every, about every 10 seconds. Mm. So six pumps a minute, whereas you, you, see, you see them and they go... Mm. Poof, 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 poof. For cylinders full, fantastic. Wow. But um, no, not good. Wow. Gotta yeah. get the word out. So is yeah. Dana involved in this? I mean, are they? No, no, is this no, one of their awareness things? No. So, so from from RF four, uh, they were coming up with things like, um, we need to monitor the diver. Uh, we need to be measuring what he does. Well, you know, we measure the we monitor the gas that the diver's breathing already, and a lot of divers ignore those warnings. Yeah. So, you know, is it going to really do us any good to monitor the diver? Add more a more. lot of expense. You know, monitoring. The CO2 in, in the mouthpiece was another thing from RF4. Very hard to um, 
uh, measure. I mean, we mm. do it in the lab, and it's really a very, very difficult, difficult mm. process for us. Um, and and that, when we've got the latest Anstey all singing, all dancing machine me- uh, d- uh, designed specifically to measure volume weighted average mm. inspired CO2, and, and that's exactly what you need to be knowing mm. in the mouthpiece if you're going to measure it in the mouthpiece. So just measuring in, in the inhale hose is p- perfectly okay for the repeaters point of view you need to know if, if co2 is coming right. through the through the ah. but the scientists which drove rf4 they're all wanting that little bit more to measure the human and i came away from rf4 quite um disgruntled in a way because i felt that auction fires are actually uh, happening and we we it's all being swept under the carpet the people that get injured don't even talk about it the people that happens to any of the dive centers you talk to most dive centers they've got an auction pump and they've, they've had a an odd Odd, an odd burn, yeah. 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 Our friend, I'll give a shout out to our friend Randy Thornton at Subgravity because yeah. he did that big post on his rebreather. He just that he opened his O2 and it went, and he, he burned his hand pretty badly. Yeah, and, and was yeah. brave enough to say, "Hey, I'm not going to do that." You know, I yeah. screwed up, and boom. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So again, he could probably. You know, you just don't know when there's going to be contamination in the right. first stages. So. Um, uh, I think that was part so, of it was this well, too or something. Yeah, so in my talk, you know, I said 50% of the fires start in the high-pressure hoses, but 50% start in the first stages. Um, and so you've just got to pressurise slowly. There's, yeah. there's no substitute. And, and Gareth Locke came up with a good idea, and that is actually depressurise the low-pressure side oh. when you turn it on. So you just you know press press the inflator uh, button, well, you manually add, in, add valve, and press oh. that while you, while you open the valve so it starts to hiss out, and, and great. Oh. And that's, okay, that'll that's, yeah. that'll yeah. slow down that. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So interesting times, and what yeah. a great, great show we're having. It is, really yeah, is. Yeah. Guys, you mind you mind me just asking a quick question, just a quick answer from both of you. Do you think that the community avoids like because both of you showed in your presentations, you were more uh, like uh, different pictures, more shocking, and yours were more gruesome in terms of the the impacts of which is which is normal but i i I felt like the audience reacted to the pictures because they're there for that that purpose do you think that the community maybe all communities not not just the diving community avoid talking about these incidents uh, as a like a more positive um uh, energy instead of uh uh, because it is necessary right to bring awareness to to these things in diving we even though it's easier perhaps to avoid the unpleasant yeah. we need to talk about it because it's the only way we can improve safety by calling out issues like oxygen fires and other things and have it out there so people yeah. are aware and yeah yeah yeah, yeah and sure. it's hard enough to get people to do something <laughs> but, I mean, the, you know it's 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 <laughs> it's it, it, it relates to every single diver that's using nitrox every single diver that's using open circuit nitrox closed circuit rebreathers right. every make of rebreather right. and that's why i'm not branded i don't have a single there's no, no brand on that on that ad, uh, there's no advert for my company i don't wear a, a branded shirt of any mm-hmm. sort um because it's it, this is completely it goes across the whole all of us it, uh, yeah, it's, it's everybody yeah. in diving it's, it's the, from the filling station through to every every diver that uses nitrox yeah. so um you know, it's important to get them. Still, but nobody's been brave enough yet to to, to bring up the subject, and so that's why yeah, I thought, well, actually, you know, we need to. Oh, do there it. you go. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. when a diver dies or a diver gets hurt, and we all suffer as yeah. a community, really. So we'll have to put. We'll have to get an article okay. uh, on yeah, oxygen yeah. fires. That would be really good. Yeah, sure, sure. Get some pictures, Michael. Yeah, thank, thank you. you so much. Thank yeah, you. you provided a little bit of needed energy into uh, the meeting. Yeah. The rest of us were all a, we're all a little bit dry in our subjects, and we're not used to presenting like you are. You seem to be quite a natural at yeah. it but so uh, all those espressos you know? yeah <laughs> mm. all, the, all the red wine last night yeah, yeah. That <laughs> probably helped yeah yeah, yeah. so um yeah, I'm interested to, to know about, uh, you know, to look back at the old days. 1991 was when it all started. Right. And uh, what was your drive, first of all, to get into diving? You know, what, what, what? Well, you know, I had grown up, what, like probably like you, Jacques Cousteau and Sea Hunt. And, you know, it just all, and, but it, I didn't act on it. I swam. Uh, I grew up in the Midwest near the lakes. But when I came out to graduate school in the Pacific Ocean, I had to try it. And I remember my first breath, it was at Raleigh's Dive Center in their pool. My first breath on a regular, I was like, <laughs> you know, just. <laughs> and uh, I guess I just had so not been able to. So at what stage did you start with Billy Deans? And, and, and so that was, so, so I, I, I became a recreational diver. I kind of worked up to dive master. Um, and then I ended up doing this expedition. It was a citizen science. It was all sort of undercover because they were diving to 50 meters on, you know, air with 
Navy tables and look, doing uh, uh, bioessays. And it was, I was just hooked. And, but no one, there was no information. You know, all the mag, no one talked about it. So I started calling people and there were all these little groups, you know, doing the cave divers, you know, and the wreck diver, the Doria, you know. So yeah, that yeah. gave me motivation to start AquaCore. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was great to see the the, uh, the references to, 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 to the uh, Skin Diver magazine, Bill oh, Gleason, yeah. and I remember him, of course. Um, brilliant, absolutely brilliant. It was, it was very were, upsetting, but, if you yeah. remember. The, they were like, oh my God, you know, <laughs> <laughs> what are these people doing? You know, and, and it was yeah. a, maybe a legitimate fear. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know. Well, we had the same problem with rebreathers. Yeah. Um, you know, they, 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 the, the sports diving organizations were saying, you know, when can we dive with rebreathers? And they say, well, no, no, not yet, not yet, not yet. And it, it, divers interpreted that as being, okay, you can't use it. And, and we were having dive boats banning uh, rebreathers, rebreathers on their boat originally. And, and uh, you know, one or two enterprising uh, boat owners would say, um, well, really, you've got to be a brain surgeon not to realize that this is the future. Right. Uh, sorry, you've got, to, you've, got to be, you've got to be an idiot not to realize that you don't have to be a brain surgeon to realize. Yeah, exactly, yeah. That, yeah I'm sorry about rocket that. Rocket scientist. Yeah, yeah, you don't have to be a rocket scientist yeah. to know that this is the future. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, well, we went through the same thing yeah. with rebreathers, and um, I'm sure we'll It's maybe that. good that the, in our industry in particular, because our lives are online, right? We can't breathe water. So that it's, there's that saying, there's old divers and bold divers, but no old bold divers. And so maybe as an industry, it's not bad that we're a little slow to change, you know, not just jump on the new whatever it is. Yeah, yeah you can Because lives that. are yeah. The state. agencies have got to have their, their protocols in place. They've got to learn about the new technology right. and all that sort of thing. So yeah. I, I can understand it. And I, uh, I'd like to read the Drew article, Drew Richardson. Oh, yeah. He's still boss of Paddy now. And, yeah. and uh, I have that. As young as he ever was, you know, and uh, doing very well. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that really made a difference. The him putting it out there, then everybody was yeah, talking about it. So yeah, yeah. Great yeah. Well, great I'll pull article. that article for you. Great article. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. Great, well, great show. Great yeah. presentation. Awesome. Thank you. Good. Good. Thanks. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.